everyone, my name is Ingrid Honkala and just recently I created a couple of videos where I share with you my near death experience and how this experience uh, allowed me to communicate with beings of light. But besides being able to communicate with the beings of light, this experience also opened the door for me to be able to perceive and sense the presence of what we will call spirits. I was around four years old when I started to communicate with the beings of light and, and perceive them and sense their presence. And um, about a year later, when I was five years old, due to some drawings that I was doing at a school where I kept repeatedly painting the um, people, like any, any shape I will paint animals, people, even objects, I will put auras around. And I will paint all over the, the pictures, um, like drawings of things that look like stars and, and the sun all over the place. And when the teacher asked me what this was on these drawings, I said to her, they are my friends. They are the beings of light. So due, due to these drawings, the, the teacher called my mom and my mom learned that I, I was seeing something that was actually sounding pretty unusual. So my mom didn't make a big deal at school. They, they thought I was having imaginary friends. And once I was by myself with my mom, she, for the first time, revealed to me that she actually also could see spirits. So it was the first time I learned about this. She said that she had been seen and communicated, communicating with spirits since she was five years old and she said that this was actually not unusual in her family because in our my family blood bloodline and my mom's family um there's been already few members of the family that uh, were mediums so at this point uh, for my mom was like oh my god it was not now that impossible or that rare that one of her daughters uh, could actually um, do the same thing. So uh, after this talk, uh, my mom just uh, shared the experiences with me and say to, to please not to tell my sisters or to tell anyone because usually this was, this will cause um, people to be afraid. And she said that since she was little, she experienced that uh, people didn't really want to talk or, or accept this kind of talking around. It, it was it was a, a, a something to be fearful for. So okay, I didn't I didn't say absolutely anything, and I thought that my mom was seeing beings of light, and and we both thought that we were actually seeing the same thing and actually it was when I was six years old that uh, one night um, my mom decided um, to do a house project and she my dad was traveling and she asked uh, one of her brothers if he could come and help her paint she was painting the entire house and our house at the time was like those type of house that is houses that look like uh, the Spaniard looking houses with a courtyard and the rooms were around the courtyard. So um, that day after finishing a whole day painting, uh, my mother asked her brother if she wanted to stay because it was late. And um, there was uh, only one room in the house that had not been painted. That was the bedroom where all of us stayed. It was my mom, my my um, uncle and us, we were the four girls and we all stayed in the room and my mom went and left all the doors in the house open so the, the, the house could vent because the smell was very strong and she closed the, 
door in the bedroom where we were staying and it turned off the lights except for the light of there was a, a walk-in closet in the bedroom and she usually left this light on so if she needed to get up at night or we needed to uh, do anything go to the bathroom at night uh, we could see what we were doing that night we all went to bed and I don't know what time it was but sometime in the middle of the night I hear a noise and the noise woke me up and when I opened my eyes immediately as I saw a silhouette the, the image of a person entering opening the door and entering the bathroom I fell absolutely and completely petrified I couldn't talk or move or blink I felt like my entire body was cold like I couldn't move I tried to call my mom and I couldn't the voice wouldn't come out of me so I remained in the in the bed just completely still looking at this presence it was like a black silhouette and it looked like it had a hat on and like I, I like it had like a big coat and this presence entered the room and walked towards the walk-in closet and once it reached the closet it opened the door completely turned off the light and went in the closet and closed the door at that moment I just thought about the beams of light and once I, I recall or, or call them they they I, I saw a being a blue being of light appearing right next to me and I was able to feel like okay now I'm not alone and I, I and I felt this this peaceful moment but at the same time I, I didn't want to move because I didn't want this presence or, or this being that I just had seen know that I was aware that I had seen him Everybody in the look around finally I was able to move and everybody was in their beds including my uncle so it was not anybody of us I just stay in the bed and when finally the first light in the morning came through the window I looked at my mom and she just uh, stood up from the bed and when she was leaving the bedroom I, I followed her and I told Ma, I told my mom what I had seen, and she was like, she believed me, and now she she really realized that I could see the spirits because she had seen the exact same thing. She was awake, and she said not to worry. She said that everything was going to be fine, not to be scared. And I said, Mom, how I do not to be scared? And 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 she said just think about just pray just pray to God and and nothing is going to happen there's just spirits are just beings of people that was alive before and and they're just pretty much still attached to this world then that night when I went to bed and was able to communicate with the beings of light I actually I ask who are these spirits what is going on then oh actually before that when I was talking to my mom I told my mom mom these spirits and the beings of light are not the same that day I had the complete clarity that what I had seen that night and this beings of light were completely different thing but the beautiful thing was that the first thing that the beings of light said to me that night was the complete opposite of what I was thinking they said to me these spirits as you call them yourself as we are all the same that was just 
amazing to hear this. They say we are all the same. The only difference is that we vibrate at different frequencies. Then that day they started to introduce to me the concept of the physical and non-physical in a very easy way for me to understand it. They say that as a, a humans we experience a world that is seemingly more solid and tangible and that we experience it mainly through our five senses. Then they continue explaining that there was a physical, as there was a physical realm, there was also non-physical realms like the ones I have been experiencing throughout these years. With these, they, they were trying to mean my what happened during my near-death experience and during my out-of-body experiences. They said that between all those realms, there is a non-physical realm that is very similar to the physical realm. And when our spirit leaves the body and transitions into the non-physical, there is actually a process that the spirit undergoes before it can completely detach from the known. Since many of the spirits still have a keen interest about the matters of this world due to all those strong bonds that we create with the ones that we love, then it will take a while before they can detach and continue their journey. The beings of life actually say that some of them are so attached that they don't even realize that they are not in the physical realm anymore. Since time doesn't operate the same way that it does for us in, in our physical realm, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Only when we are ready and they are ready to transcend this bond, to, to transcend these attachments, it will happen. So for me, what I found most amazing about all these teachings uh, from the beings of light on this subject is the realization that the universe is so giving and that to the point that everything happens as a process. And to me, that, that just shows how unconditionally loving is the universe. I could talk about this for hours actually, but I'm going to stop here. Not just uh, because I don't want to say more, but because the main reason for me to create this video was because my grandmother recently passed. And my true intention with the video I'm making today is to try to alleviate the pain of anyone that is experiencing the loss of a loved one. My grandmother, after being with us for 92 years, she was actually born in 1925, just passed. And although her passing is so hard and although seeing the loved ones leave this world is so hard and, and leave this, create this emptiness in, in our chest and we feel pain and, and it's, it's, we feel wounded. I want you to I want to let you know that they are here with us until they are ready or we are ready to let go. So my grandmother who just passed away last Saturday night came to us and like what many would refer us came to us to say goodbye. I actually think that she came to say hi. I am here. I'm, I'm still around. And the first person that she 
tried or she communicated with was one of my sisters my youngest sister she's a very very sensitive person as well and she uh, my grandmother who was born in bogota the day of her passing was in in bogota as well and my youngest sister who is uh, now uh, living for a while in a city called cartagena was in her apartment and she uh, started to listen to the neighbor's radio that went really really loud then she realized that the radio was playing a song that my sister had actually dedicated to my grandmother when my sister was little and she remembered that the day she did dedicated this song to my grandma she felt so touched by my sister doing this action and by the song itself that just her eyes tear up and, and, and she just felt very emotional. And that was the exact song that was playing in that radio very loud that night. And when the uh, song ended, the radio went off. And at that moment, my sister remember that she actually had dedicated this song to gr my grandmother and she felt wow, something is, is not right with my grandma. And she didn't know that my grandma was uh, at the hospital because this all happened really fast. She felt very sick and they took her to the hospital and nobody was expecting her to pass. And then no long after she listened to the song, she received a message from my mom saying that my grandma had passed and my mom my sister said i knew it I, I knew it and she told what had happened to to my mom and uh, i learned about her passing the day after and when i was in the uh, dining room table uh, sharing the news with my husband and my son i i uh actually felt that someone had touched my back from top down and I felt this energy that rolled down my whole back and I just yelled and when I look to my shoulder I saw four beams of light shining very brightly next to my shoulder and they were between purple and, and silver and when I looked I immediately perceive the scent the, 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 the scent the, the smell of my grandmother so I knew it was her and I just it was beautiful because I just felt grandma thanks for being here Thanks for letting me know that you're still here with us and I know that you are going to keep living your life the way you left you lifted when you were here on earth. She was a very happy person. She was an exceptional woman. She was a person that lived her life with a really great spirit always thinking that we have the power to make our our dreams become reality and she was a mentor she was a mentor for me she was a uh, uh, incredibly open and and her spirit was was always open to teach and, and to give so I want to say to all of you and, and remind you and, and share with the ones that are suffering the pain of, of a lost one and that are grieving that it's okay. It's okay to feel this pain because it's hard 
not to have next to us and around us and feel the touch and the hug and the kiss of someone we love. But I want also with all these one to let you know that our loved ones are here. And they're actually not even saying goodbye. They're saying, hi, we're still here. We, we remain here. We, we know what is happening and we are aware of, of what, what is still happening around. And only the day when we're all ready to let go, it will happen. And for now, we will just remain together. And they will be here and they will be as part of the beings of light that we all are so we, we're not here to make each other suffer we're here to make each other joyful to make each other happy to give each other the support that we all need and maybe if you are not able to see or feel your loved one Thanks God and thankfully there are many people and there are more and more people open to to share their experiences and and to let us know that our loved ones are around and that uh, maybe you have the chance someday to meet a medium or to meet a psychic or to meet a person that can help you a little bit understanding and and help you with your grieving and letting you know that we are never alone we don't leave each other just like that we we are all one so we're all connected and we are here to help guide and protect each other so thank you again for being here with me and I will keep sharing and I will keep connected and I will keep giving whatever I can to for you to know that we are light, that we are spirit, that as we leave this world, we continue our path in the realm of the light holding each other hands, giving the love and never abandoning each other. I love you and I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here with me today. Bye.